I'd like to talk to you about something challenging. And, and I hesitate on these types of videos because they're so intricate that I never want to misspeak. So I ask the Holy Spirit to stay with me. It was a viewer's comment on a recent video I did on marriage and annulment. And this person wrote, my spouse left me for another woman. I was encouraged to pursue an annulment, which I did, and it was granted. And I'm now married to a beautiful, holy man in the church. But listening to this video, I feel that I betrayed my marriage vows of that first marriage. So I told this person I would talk about this. So we do not want to be in schism. We must always follow Christ, which means stay in union with his church. Luther decided he knew better and he formed 48,000 new churches. I did not want to be him on judgment day when he broke away from the church because it wasn't just one against the other truth and another truth. It was one saying, I don't like that. So I'm going to do this. And lots of other people decided to follow him and make their own religions. Like, oh yeah, you know what? If I don't like that, I don't, I'm going to start my own. But I'm getting a little sidetracked. But I have to remind you just how important it is to not be in schism. So we've got to stay under the headship of the church. Church is Christ. We are the bride, right? And so you are only married once, period. The only time your marriage ends is when your spouse dies, period. But our Lord has we must check whether a marriage is valid or not in in the olden days as we used to say this was only needed in these rarest of cases where a someone literally a parent told someone i will force you to marry this man because you're pregnant and you're not going to shame the family and I mean, literally, there was a shotgun. That's why it's called a shotgun wedding. You do it or else. And that person didn't want to get married and they did it. And so their vows were found to be, you didn't make these willingly. You did not make these out of free will. You're not validly married. We look at the nine-year-old child who's forced to marry these Muslims who, yeah, anyway, they're, they think it's okay to marry someone nine years old. She can't consent. So those would be found to be invalid. So in the past, it was really approximately 2% of all worldwide annulments that were granted. Remember, an annulment only checks to see if a marriage is valid or not. But in the country of America, I know you guys are watching these from around the world, but in the country of America, though we are responsible for 7% of the world's marriages, we are responsible for over 90% of the world's annulments. That means in America, you apply for one, you get it. There's a scandal of the annulment system. Absolutely scandalous. And I would not want to be those on the tribunals because they do have to answer to God. Did a real marriage exist? Well, now they've got these crazy little, well, if you're not mature enough or if you really didn't know what you're getting yourself into, no one knows what you're getting yourself into until you're in it. A priesthood, no one knows exactly what they're getting themselves into. And to say you are is ignorant. We are all ignorant of what's going to happen in our futures. You never, there's some things you just can't understand. Having a baby, you knew what would be painful, but you didn't know how painful until you went through it. But they use that immaturity clause so much and you can see I'm getting riled up again. All right. So, Tribunals in this country are granting annulments, and if you have had one granted, chances are it shouldn't have been granted. That your marriage probably was valid, your first spouse. Here's the thing. What you bind on earth is bound in heaven, loose on earth, loosed in heaven. That was given to Peter, thus the papacy, and they pass it down and they give their power. If the church whether they should have or should not have, has granted you an annulment and you in good conscience did it just 
for truthful reasons, let me see if a marriage existed or not. And you trusted those people making that decision. And you were granted your annulment. Again, regardless of if two, 300 years ago, it would have been granted or not, you were granted an annulment. I don't like it. I don't like explaining it to my Protestant friends who are like, Christine, I, you're wrong. You, because, I mean, heck, they're Protestants and they don't agree with the Catholic faith anyway. I get it. It's a scandal. I, I Well, that's why I have my standards meetings. I stand with them. First marriage, period. So for you who wrote that comment, you were validly declared that no marriage truly existed because when the church loosed it on earth, the Lord loosed it in heaven. There was no first marriage. So this marriage to your good and holy what the world would call your second husband is truly your first and only marriage. So be at peace knowing that you're validly married. You can go to communion. You can receive the sacraments. You can die and face the Lord. Now, all that said, had you had the wisdom you had today back then, yeah, I would have still said, Regardless of the fact that you got the annulment, go back and fight for your marriage. There, I have many standards in my standards group where their spouses applied for and got these declarations of nullity. My standards are saying, I don't care. I'm still going to stand for marriage because I know my vow was true. But I wanted just to be careful about what the church says, what is valid, what you Again, this is about conscience. And if you have to answer to God and say, Lord, I wanted to follow you and your church, so I defer to the authorities above me. And you can look God in the eye and answer with a clear conscience that that's all you're trying to do, then be at peace. But I think about, there was a woman I saw doing a video, made me so livid. Like, Come to our website, www.blahblah, and we're going to show you how to get an annulment either way. We've got the tricks and the secrets, and it's technically not how she said it. But I thought, you make me want to vomit. You're teaching people how they can get around the system and phrase it just the way to make sure they get that annulment. Now, you, on the other hand, will have someone, something to answer for if you went to that woman or a website like her, like, oh, let's go to her. She'll phrase it just right. Be careful. I'm not God. I'm not even going to sit here and say that I know what God is going to do. But I'm just telling you, you best be careful because you do have to answer to God. Now, even if you're in a valid so-called second marriage, which, again, in the eyes of God is your first marriage, and you've got children with your first spouse, I can't even speak to that publicly because that's a case by case where I talk to people where divorce does devastate the children. And then the declarations of nullity that your four or five kids were told, yeah, there was no marriage. Whether the church tries to say something otherwise, those kids always feel like I was invalid. I wasn't even a product of a marriage. What, what am I? Am I illegitimate? So there are many cases where I talk to people and say, yeah, fight for your first spouse. I mean, the church passes out annulments like candy. I've seen them where they've annulled this one, then you got married in the church a second time. Oh, and then they've annulled that. And then you get, I'm like, what? Supposedly the second time they were mature and knew how to, and it's like that marriage. But then you find a reason that they, let me get me started. So there are times where I'm like, yeah, even though it's been nullified. Go reconcile with your first spouse. But just so that I end this video on the right notes, if you did receive an annulment that was legal, you are free to marry and the Lord has loosed that in heaven because it was loosed on earth. And in good conscience, you can go to sleep, know that you learned a lesson. And perhaps to you, lady, who wrote this, comment to me 
You can take what you've learned and at least help someone else. You won't encourage someone to get annulment. You treasure that good holy husband that you have. You love him. You devote everything you can to him. But then the next person who's going through a difficult marriage, don't encourage them to get the annulment. Encourage them to stand. Send them to me. I'll teach them. I'll teach them how to stand by God's grace. Not I, but he who talks through me. And I hope never to be an obstacle to his voice through my mouth. I was a little hesitant. I hope it made sense. I hope it didn't seem evasive. But I am always conscious of not wanting to say anything that offends the Lord. I'm Dr. Christine Bacon. Thanks for watching this informational Bacon bit. And I want to remind you always to live your life sunny side up.